Google Forms is a surveying tool included within Google Apps for Education. It provides educators with an easy way to gather data quickly and efficiently. In this tutorial, I'm just going to show you a few of the basic functions of Google Forms. In order to get started with Google Forms, the first thing you want to do is log into your Gmail account and go to Google Drive. From there, you can create a form by selecting New and then going down here to More and selecting Google Forms. Once this loads up, the first thing you'll want to do is go up here and give your untitled form a name. So click here in this box and we'll call this one test number one. You'll see up here at the top there's a couple form settings. I like to always use this one, show progress bar at the bottom of form pages. I find the students like to know where they stand. They like to know how many questions they have left. Um, there's also one that says only allow one person one response per person requires login. Depending on your needs, this could be a useful setting. And this also asks you to shuffle question order. For the most part, I like to leave these two unchecked uh, just because I like to set up the questions in an order that flows. If you just had a random survey, you could, you could do it that way. So now you'll see when I change the name of my form, it reflects this here in the form title line. You can also add a little description about the form. So we'll just say this is just a test. Now you get down here to the meat of it and this is where you can edit your questions. So there's a few different types of questions. If you click this drop down arrow you'll see all of them and you'll see a lot of the basic forms of test questions. We have text, which is just a small text box. Paragraph text allows the students to type in a longer answer, like an essay question. Multiple choice is just like you're used to. It's uh, A, B, C, D, or E, or as many choices as you want. You can add in all of those. Check boxes allows the students to check a box next to the answer. So if you want to say, select all of these that apply, you could select check box or choose from a list very similar you can have a bunch of options and the students choose from a drop down list of which one they would like I'm not going to go into the other four they're a little bit more detailed and um, since this is a tutorial for elementary education we'll do those tutorials at another time so I'm going to leave this first question as a multiple choice and I'm going to ask the question what time do you like to eat lunch so that's our question title. Here you see there's a box for help text. In our district we have a lot of students who are learning English as a second language. So I find this uh, beneficial if you want to type in a translation. You can use Google Translate to do that or you can have somebody who speaks the language thoroughly translate that as well. Once you have the question and the help text set up you can start typing in the options for the answers. So you'll see here I will go ahead and put a couple answers in here. And you notice when I click on the next one, it automatically brings down another option. So we'll say 1 o'clock p.m. And when you have a couple answers in there, you'll see that there's also an option to add other. So I'm going to click this and show you what that looks like. This allows the students or parents to type in their own answer. If they don't like to eat lunch at one of the times that you've selected, they can type in their own. So down here, the last option you'll see here is, do you want to make this a required question? For all the things that you're giving to students, I think you should make all the answers required. Uh, if you don't, what ends up happening is they might just click through answers that they don't want to work on or don't want to take their time. And then when you gather the data, you'll see that you have incomplete data for students. Since the whole point of this is to gather data, I like to make the, all the questions required. When you finish setting up the question the way you like it, you can select Done, and it'll show you what the question looks like. If you'd like to add another question, you just select Add Item, and you repeat the process. We'll make this one a text question. We'll say, who is your favorite superhero? And we'll make this a text question. And also make it required. And select Done. So now we have a couple questions in here that are required. You know they are because they have these little red uh, asterisks next to them.
So if you want to see what your form looks like before you send it out just to make sure uh, that you're proofreading and editing, you can go up here to this tab and select view live form and it'll pop up in a tab next to it. You want to make sure you have your browser's pop-up blocker uh, disabled for this. So you see here these are what our questions look like 12 p.m., 1 p.m., 2 p.m. or other who is your favorite superhero and when they finish they click submit if you like your form the way it is, you can go ahead and send it on. If you want to change the theme, however, you may do so by going back to your form and clicking this tab right here, Change Theme. And you can see on the side there's a bunch of different layouts that you can use that just kind of spice it up a little bit, make it look a little nicer. So let's give this one the Science Lab feel. And after I click on it, you see it just changes the way this looks, makes it look a little neater. Once you have the theme that you like, you can go back to the section that says Edit Questions. Scrolling down to the bottom, you'll see before you send the form, there are a couple things you can change. On the confirmation page, you can select what you would like this to say when they are done. So maybe you want to change this to, thank you for taking my survey. So that will pop up whenever the student or parent finishes the survey. You can also select this to show link to submit another response. I think this is really beneficial if you're doing this at a parent night and you have these set up in the computer lab. You can just have one parent sit down at the computer, take their survey, and as soon as they're done, the link will pop up again to submit another response. So another parent can just come right in there right behind them and take the survey. They can all get them done and it just makes things go a little bit quicker. You can also select this to publish and show a public link to the form results. I would not recommend this if you're doing things in an educational setting like giving kids assessments or collecting parent information. I would not make a public link to the results. You can also allow responders to edit responses after submitting. This might be helpful in the case of using forms to do student assessment. If, say, they run out of time in the computer lab and don't get to finish their form, then they can just go ahead and submit it and then come back after the fact and finish their test. So when you have all of your settings the way you like them, you can send this form out to people by clicking Send Form. And it'll pop up with a little box that allows you to send it in a few different ways. One way to send it is by using a website address, a URL. You can just copy this link. I like to click short URL, uh, especially if you're doing this with kids and they need to type this in. The shorter the link, the better. So you just copy this link by pressing Command and C or right clicking and copy. You can also send the link um, through social networks like Google+, Facebook, or Twitter. Now, I don't see that happening a whole lot in an educational setting. Another way is you can send the form via email. If you click here, it gives you the option uh, to type in email addresses. This is really helpful if you have your contacts saved in your contact setting in Gmail. I showed you how to do that in an early tutorial, and I'll link that in this one as well. But basically, if you save your contacts and organize them into groups, such as like student group or parent group, you could send these forms out to the group by just typing in the name of the group. Like if you had a student group, you could just start typing student group, and that would pop up. You could click that, and it would send this form to every student in that group. Another way you can send this form is to embed it. You can embed it into uh, your own personal website by just copying this link here and going into your website editing page and pasting it. And if you go back into your drive where you created the form, you'll notice that there is now a spreadsheet to gather your responses. So if you click and open this up, you can look at that really quick. It'll show you all the questions with corresponding columns where it'll be gathering the data. So as people take the survey, all of their responses will be automatically 
populate it into these spreadsheet columns and it will show you the results of their survey. This is really helpful for teachers because you can gather this information and then manipulate it however you want. If you want to take a list of the emails for instance and copy and paste them into another spreadsheet so that you can create a contacts list you can do that or if you want to conditionally format these columns so that you can use forms for assessment you can do that as well and I'll show you how to do that in one of the later tutorials so these are just some of the basic functions of Google Forms. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section and I'll do my best to respond to all of them. Thanks and have a good day.